Hello YouTube, happy 4th of July. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make fireworks using the particle system. All right, let's get started. Uh, first thing to do is just to create a new project. Um, I did, this one is the first person mode project with starter content. Um, I just created it here. I named it Firework Show. And let me just pull this over. There we go. Okay, um, so first thing we need to do is uh, get it so that it actually, uh, so that the bullet fires directly from the gun instead of at the character, which is the way that the first person character is set up uh, originally. So if you click on the character and you go to uh, the first person blueprint over here, instead of down here where it says get controlled rotation, we can have it spawn from the character's gun. Uh, so, view list, go down to character, go to skeleton, and then for the gun part on the right hand, where is the right hand? There it is. <laughs> okay, for the right hand, go to add socket. Uh, let's just call it bullet for no reason. And then we are going to then set the location of the socket. You go to animation, select your idle pose for convenience, and set bullet accordingly by editing these values over here. So that the X, Y, and Z. And then once you have it roughly in the middle, you're essentially good to go. Extend this out a little bit more. Okay, now in this one, instead of the get controlled location and all of that, you can just essentially delete this here. Um, drag in your first person mesh and then type in socket because you're getting the socket location and the socket name is bullet and just plug that in in there and then you're supposed to get the controller rotation get controller rotation plug that in here and so now you have your transform uh, in the spawn actor and then we can just get rid of the sound or you could keep it, it that depends on you now uh, and we're also going to inside this projectile class um, this is where we're going to start editing where the explosions actually happen. So we're good with that. And then you can go ahead and test. See that it fires directly from the gun now. And we have our projectile. But we don't have our fireworks yet because we haven't played with any particle systems. So the next step is to go to our first person projectile and start doing things over here. So begin play and fireworks usually have a delay so we have a delay for one second and then when that delay happens we're going to fire off a projectile and the projectile is going to come directly off the sphere so um, or sorry particle so spawn, part, uh, spawn emitter at location, this is what we need. And the sphere is going to be the location and the rotation. Location, rotation. Location. 
and the emitter template is going to be whatever firework we've just created. Um, all that needs to do after that is get reference to self and destroy the actor. And that's pretty much it for the uh, for the blueprint of the actual firework. You can test it using some other one. So, for example, this explosion blueprint. Um, you can just okay. You can just uh, go over here and test it, and you see it delays for a second and then does an explosion. So we're going to actually replace that with our own particle systems. Uh, so let's create a new folder called particle. And inside this we're going to start our particle system. And call it firework1 because you have the option of creating multiple fireworks and then randomly toggling between them. Now the particle system, I went over this before in um, I believe my arrow video, but the particle system is is, um, is done from left to right because you can create new emitters and then up to down which each one is a module so it goes in order this way. Um, so what we need to do right now because we want the just general explosion firework is we need to uh, make it radial and we need um, we need to essentially edit the size of the actual particle of the firework set the velocity not only just in this uh, z direction but also x and y to have a more blast looking and then the color we can leave alone because the color we can just set it to whatever texture we attach to this. Okay. So first things first. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna set the spawn of this. Now, because we want it to happen in bursts, what we need to do is go to our burst list, and then in here we can set the amount that we want in our burst. I found that setting that to 10 is pretty good and we keep that in the same element. The Leave the rate okay. You can bump this up over here or well down to 10. So quantity wise it's a little bit less than what it was before. The lifetime, you can leave that alone for the, um, we do want it to eventually stop though, so I think this is in required. Oh yeah, um, so over here, over here, this emitter loops, set that to one so that it just does one burst and that's it. The duration, um, I just put it down to like 0.5 and as you can see it creates the burst and finished. So next we want to set our velocity. We'll set our size later and the velocity for our start velocity we want each one to go in all directions instead of just Z. As you see here it goes 150 but these ones are positive and negative. That's what enables the spread. So if we set it to, let's say, uh, 100, or even something like 500, or whatever size would work, um, this is the size, or sorry, this is the um, direction that it will go and to that particular speed. So let's do uh, 500. Oh, and, uh, sorry, positive 500 for the maxes and negative 500 for the mins. So now you see here it explodes 
but it's not very big so let's increase the size over here so start size um, maximum let's make that 100 and the minimum we can leave at 25 uh, but I'm gonna bump it to 50 or 500 my bad 50 there we go so now it creates this kind of nice little spread um, and you can kind of see if you rotate around it they all or on all sides, um, it creates this explosion-like effect. And you can leave the rest alone. Now, I set it like this initially because instead of just one type, I want multiple types of emitters to fire at once. And to do that, you can just right-click and then go to Duplicate and Duplicate. And you can see that it has increased um, the amount because now there's three emitters doing the exact same thing. So let's just stop for now. Go to um, go to our we'll, let's create a subfolder inside particles and call it materials. And this is where we're going to set our textures. So our material over here we'll have one for red one for white and one for blue and all we're doing here is we're creating a material that is just emissive red white or blue uh, emissive means that no matter where the light is it it kinda creates like this glowing effect but before we do any of that we need to actually set this to a translucent type of material so that we can get uh, some other shape so, uh, go down to, oh, I'm sorry, it, this materials tab should be open. So, uh, go to translucent, now you see opacity has opened up. You can type in diamond, and it creates like this diamond gradient, and it, as you can see, if you select the uh, plane preview, you'll see it creates a nice diamond effect. And then in our base color, we can create a vector. Um, con or type in const so you, it's a constant vector in the third dimension and then you can just make red since we're doing red just turn that to one and there you go you have a nice little red um, thing right there and so that's for red just click save for me, it takes a little time to save, especially with the diamond gradient. Uh, do the same thing with white and blue. Now with white, you want to um, make all of these one because that's what actually creates the white color. Just check using this. I think I messed up with red. Let me just go back and check this real quick. Yeah, see I put it in base color, not emissive. You want to put it in emissive to get that nice bright, um, that bright looking red like that instead of base which has kind of a duller effect <clears throat> and then the last one for blue we do the same thing and then as soon as we have this we will have our three colors those three colors will be piped into our particle system All right. So we have our red, white, and blue. Now how do we actually get into the particle system? We do it like this. Go back to your particles, into fireworks. Underneath required, you'll see this materials tab over here and the default particle. Well, this is where we set it. So this is our white, and then we have our red,
And lastly, we have our blue. And give it some time, it will start rendering these properly. There we go. And now you have a nice little explosion firework. Save that. Go back to your um, your projectile where you have where you created this spawn emitter location, and there you go. As soon as you do that, it should work. And there you go. You have your first firework. All to all you need to do now is um, to create multiple different types of fireworks. Is just go to your um, projectile class and do a simple switch statement. This will allow you to actually be able to um, switch between different types of fireworks or even randomize it. Um, so that's depending on if you want to just leave it like this or if you want to create something a little bit more complicated. I'm going to show you how to do the switch statement over here. Um, so first, before this, uh, before we actually get to the emitter, we want to start switching between our ints. So type in switch, and then switch on integer. Then over here, if we type in just rand. You can see in this list over here, random integer in range. Click on that. Now, the default is one that doesn't have a value. If you choose to, click add pin and you see the 0, 1, 2, and default. So that means there's four total options. What you can do is just just like remove default and you just have 0, 1, 2. Then so um, you would do the random integer range from 0 to 2 because if you click on this you can see you can read in there um, it goes from negative to equal minimum and or sorry greater or equal than the minimum and less than or equal to the maximum so if you just pipe that here it will select something random chose and then whatever spawn is connected to this particular one um, that's the one that it will actually use so you can just create multiple emitters now for the first location, second location, and then connect these. Um, and then as long as you set um, the actual emitter template different, uh, you're good to go. Just make sure you connect these parts now to the destroy actor. And that is how you get multiple fireworks to play in your thing. You're not going to see it here since I'm using the same template. But that is how you make fireworks. And if you decide to um, just have or to create multiple different types, then you'll get something that looks more or less like this. So, happy 4th of July, everyone. I hope you liked this video and learned a little bit of a little bit more about the particle system within Unreal Engine. Um, please like and subscribe if you want more tutorials and feel free to leave comments below. Thank you.